on this Weber Cup lane. And I'm sure the two-hander from Finland will be looking to redress the balance. Now then, how are the conditions going to suit these two players today? Well, the thing is, uh, Simon, that Oscar's actually going to burn the right-hand side of the lane with his uh, high-power, high-revving bowling ball. Barnes is going to be playing in the sim same sort of area because they're both right-handers. It's just a matter of what's going to happen down the back end there. And that's a great-looking shot with a great shape to that ball from Chris Barnes draws first blood. Yeah, he'll take that one. Always nice to get a strike straight off the bat because it means that the way you... Now then, Palermo. One of only a handful of two-handed bowlers to be operating at the highest level. Jason Belmonte of Australia, the other man that plays at this level, and this is a good start. This is a good start. Really, Chris Barnes, uh, he and Tommy Jones fancy it when the condition starts to hook a bit more, but of course it suits Oscar Palermo, who does have the biggest strike ball in the tournament without Unbridled doubt. power and speed, and of course that's fantastic when he hits the pocket and carries all ten like you've just seen. Barnes, more of a finesse player. Controls the speed. Slightly different line, line and length. Makes two strikes in a row. Well, that's a great start. He couldn't be better, and it's put Oscar under pressure straight away. Son of Jorel, which translates to Superman. Chris Barnes with a good start. Certainly flying at the moment. Um, Simon, mean, he's actually the very form player at the moment. He's just come back from a couple of tournaments in um, throughout Europe. Had a big win in Vienna recently, and is also the current world singles champion. Palermo, on the other hand, is the PBA world champion, which he won in the United States much earlier this year. That was next ball, and uh, you will have heard Cass make the point about the two-handers having to hit the pocket, and that is keep crucial. Strikes going and keep the pressure on his opposing captain. And, of course, the other thing Barnes has seen in the past that if he can put pressure on Paloma, Paloma has been known to crack occasionally. Just get a little bit of, sometimes he sees the red mist rising and will miss a single pin. So Barnes is going to keep up the pressure. He's perfect through three. Still on route for that um, highest score. His two-handed style, just like uh, Belmonte, because he started bowling as a youngster and you know the ball was just simply too heavy, even the small ones. So had to bowl with two hands, but it allows him to put such a huge amount of revs on the ball. And that one's straight through the head pin. And I'm afraid frame three illustrates the point we were talking about. Not in the one-three pocket, high through the head pin. And the ball kept hooking and it's got a lot of power. Ten. It just didn't it is a makeable spare. It's got to chip that uh, three pin across to take the seven. No. Very close, very close indeed. Good try, but unfortunately it is the first open frame and it was a big one. But just look at what an open frame does to your score. It's destroyed it for Palermo. So his maximum reduced to 262. To think about now for Oscar. Well, likewise, something to think about for Chris Barnes because Oscar's had the open. What do you think Chris Barnes is going to do? He's going to try and bury it right in the pocket and make four strikes in a row. Really put the uh, European captain under pressure. Oh, he thought he had it as well. He thought he had it, but he's left a single pin. Yeah, I just didn't quite get the reaction. Here is the uh, slow motion replay. We're looking for the seven pin in the corner to stand up. I think he's gone just a little bit wide and it's not quite in the pocket. Can't get the drive over to that seven pin to kick it out. So this can only be a spare. We go hard and fast and straight and hope it holds on, which it does nicely. It's quite unusual for a, a right hander to leave the seven pin. Yeah, it was just the uh, the reaction in the, in the pin deck didn't quite set up and, uh, and get the carry. You can calculate exactly what anybody's doing and what he needs to do. Oh, oh. nice messenger, nice messenger. And that's the typical two-handers rogue pin. So much power going into the pocket, although it's left the 10 pin standing in the corner. There's so much power coming off this bowling ball that the head pin, and you'll see it go, hits left off the kickback straight across the pin deck and takes the 10 pin away. And as you said, Simon, we call that the messenger. And it knocked on the door and someone was at home. Means Barnes has to strike here. And that's why that is very wide and it stayed out in the oil and he is very lucky to just leave a single. 
Could have left a split there. One pin standing. Here comes the spare ball. Spare ball made of a different material to the strike ball so that it stays straight on the lane and goes at the target that you've aimed it at. Big open frame that he had. Just close the gap between him and Barnes. And coming down to the halfway stage, and this will be a very important shot. Yeah, that's nice from Palermo, and that double goes some way to covering the open frame that he had in frame three. Yes, keeps it all tight and gives him the opportunity to keep going because he's got the strikes, whereas Barnes is uh, working on two spares. 13 here at the Barnsley Metrodome. Solid start from Barnes, but unfortunately for him, can't build on that turkey, those three strikes in a row to open the game. Bowling at a much slower speed than Palermo. And it's, it's taking an age to get up there to the pocket. And uh, unfortunately, Cass, if you've seen the ball is wrong, it's a horrible wait to see what you're going to end up with. But for me, Cass, that underlines the pressure that these guys are under at the moment on the show late. Because, if, you know, if this was a regular tournament, you'd hear Chris Barnes shout something like push on that delivery to get the ball up there. He was completely silent. Yeah, you're quite right. We've seen it before with Chris. Um, he is quite uh, vocal on the lane when he's playing well. He, he looks kind of reserved, I must admit. And the man that's um, flying at the moment is uh, the European captain, Oscar Palermo, who started with two strikes, had the unfortunate open frame, but is back with another two. And the opportunity here to make another one, to go three in a row and take the lead. As I said at the top of the match, Barnes owns Palermo on this lane. And uh, Oscar Palermo... The golden opportunity here to change things in Weber Cup 13. Barnes with plenty to think about here. And there's a definite move from Barnes. And uh, has a bit more coast to coast from him. Not quite as dramatic as that, but it's certainly a move to the left. Yeah, went way left on the approach with his feet. Uh, opened up the lane, got some more angle. And the pace was right. He's not the fastest bowler in the world, but the pace was just right. Held pocket and carried all ten. So he's back in there. Six, six pins difference at the moment. Chance here Thank to look start. at the delivery style of Palermo. Doesn't put all the fingers and thumb in the ball like the other bowlers do. Relies on that other hand to create the spin. And once again, he's got the messenger across. And that was a real headbutt to take the tempin out. That sounds a bit technical to me, Simon, a headbutt. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I mean, it's just sheer unbridled power. You can see the rotation that he puts on the ball with his uh, two hands. No thumb in the ball. And it's you can just see it's going, going, going. It's slightly light in the pocket. That brings the head pin across, takes the 10 pin away. It looks fantastic. Pressure time very much now on Chris Barnes. He's managed to get that strike he wanted in frame number seven, but we're all ready to frame eight. And he really has to double to stay in this. And double he does. And uh, my goodness me, that was convincing. And finally, some vocality from Chris Barnes. Yes, a very determined on this man. But nothing seems to phase Oscar. He's had the open frame. He's put it behind him. And he's come back with four strikes in a row. Can he go for a fifth? Oh, not quite. No, you saw that one cut up to the head pin and you knew it wasn't going to quite get the reaction. And the way the ball went through, there were no messengers to help him out. It's made a big difference to the scores as well. As you can see, it's uh, high through the head pin, didn't break up. Leaves a single four pin, just go hard and straight. Although Oscar looks as though he's going to hook this one. Yeah, he's covered it nicely. Never in doubt, never in doubt. Well, I didn't have any doubt, but uh, we have seen Oscar miss uh, the odd single pin over the years. Normally a corner pin, but uh, that one's safe. But there you can see there is a difference. There's 15 pins difference in it in favour of the Americans. Business end of this game. And Chris Barnes looking to scalp the Team Europe captain, Oscar Palermo, once again. This is a big shot for Barnes. Certainly looks a lot more comfortable on the last strike. And he's definitely going left, staying left. And that's very nice indeed. I didn't think that was coming back, I'll have to be honest. 
Simon, I don't think Chris Barnes thought that was coming back, and I certainly didn't. See how far left he's starting on the on the approach there and on the lane. He's playing fourth arrow. He's pushing it right out to beyond second arrow. This is not in the pocket, but look at that. Hit him thin, make him spin. Three strikes in a row and retain the lead in the foundation frame. That's how important it is to Chris Barnes. He can throw it with the best of him still. Well, the thing is, what he's doing is he's steering clear of Oscar Palermo's line. A great looking shot from Oscar there. It sets that up in the uh, ninth frame. Team Europe captain then, still in business. A shot there of the, the holes that are drilled into the ball to suit the hand and finger pattern of each bowler. It's a, a personalised pattern of holes there, and then within those holes, all sorts of things, <laughs> all sorts of things are put, aren't they, Cass? Yeah, reverse pitches, away pitches, um, ovals, and the, yeah, drilled for uh, for comfort. It has to be great and perfect, just like this a shot, oh, and yeah. that's the one that's likely to be the winner. Great looking shot from Chris Barnes, four strikes in a row. And he's just checking the score sheet. Walk, watch this shot. Plays it around the 20th board, right in the middle of the lane, gets it out wide, comes back, and that's a much better shot, carries all 10 pins. Well, that ball covered most of Barnsley, I can tell you, and still found its way beautifully it's into the A pot. game to this, uh, to this match. And the, the clever thing is he he's, has steered clear of Oscar Paloma's line, which is uh, chewing up the lane, shall we say. He's actually gone round the line and he's got reaction in the back end. And that is the match winner. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant from Barnes. He was certainly put to the test and he had a very shaky time to finish off. And once again, this sporting Barnsley crowd, the majority of which are Team Europe fans, are right behind the captain. And I can tell you, that's an experiment ball. That's all about seeing where that one would go. <laughs> oh, oh dear, and the reverse moose. Back to Mika Koivinyemi in the crowd and his roommate over on the PBA Tour luckily saw the funny side of that one. There's Mika. I'm sure he will take his revenge at some stage during this competition. The uh, European captain's got to step up, shoot his 10th frame. Can't do anything about it. He's lost the game. And he didn't strike anyway, so he's just going to go through the 200 bar barrier. But to Chris Barnes, 252. Almost. Barnes winning each time. So the spare taken out, which gives uh, Oscu essentially another practice ball, and he'll take that. Don't get a lot of time on this uh, show lane, the players. Yeah, two right. Moves to two from the American captain. And uh, Team Europe's captain, Oscu Palermo, finishes his game up. And once again, Barnes is the winner. A tremendous amount wrong there, but he fell victim to a really clever decision by Chris Barnes. When he needed it, he came up with the goods to shoot 2.52 and earn another point for Team USA.